So Aquarius season 2022, we're back. It has arrived. The sun has entered Aquarius. And this is that part two video. I'm gonna cover the topics I didn't get to cover last time. We're gonna deal with a whole host of themes that are gonna emerge over this next uh, solar month. So get ready and stay tuned. We're gonna talk about Saturn, the lunar nodes, the eclipses, Venus and Pisces, all big changes that arrive and that define this astrology that we're living through here in the first part of 2023. My name is S.J. Anderson. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming to my channel. I talk about astrology here. This is an astrology channel and I try to ride the waves of astrological symbolism as they unfold in our reality. I find it to be highly beneficial to understand and process the human experience, both individually and collectively. So that's what we're going to do here today. And I want to come back in to these themes, if you can recall this last video. Um, I'm going to start here with the third theme on my list, Saturn's final Aquarius push, our new realities, our new realities, plural, last implementation phase. And I put plural because we all have different realities. I mean, Saturn and Aquarius, let's say in a house in your nativity, there's uh, different topics that each house can bring to the table. The fourth house, for example, can be parents or the physical home or the roots of the tradition. And so there may be new realities in many different areas that are emergent during Saturn in Aquarius 2020 through 2023 for you and for your chart. But this is the final moment of Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn leaves Aquarius on 6 March 2023. So this period of time is this sort of celebration, acknowledgement, review, even expressions of gratitude to Saturn. I like doing it that way because, um, yes, Saturn can signify grief, sadness, loss, lack, suffering of all kinds. And we can't sugarcoat that, but it also signifies these things like foundations, roots, old and reliable things, um, great ranks that can only emerge out of suffering, right? Suffering engenders things that I really love, endurance, and then um, empathy that comes from endurance. We have survived. We're survivors of Saturn and Aquarius and the sufferings that it's brought. And therefore, we're now more complete people in a way because we have more life experience to share with others, to help others. So ultimately, we can frame everything in life about service to other people, spreading love. And I think Saturn's sufferings um, require us, necessity is a key word for Saturn, but it requires us to dig deep and survive day to day and grow our hearts is maybe a way to look at it. Let me just uh, show you here this tweet I had recently. Saturn is the floor we find after hitting rock bottom. It's also the process of hitting rock bottom. It's the pain, suffering, but then we find the floor and it's the place arrived at after all the pain, hurt, suffering, sadness, and loss from those foundations, the place we arrive at this glorious and meaningful life can be built. So Saturn as foundations, I think, is a key part of its signification. And you can see in the Tarot, the Aquarius uh, card uh, corresponding in the Tarot, the card that corresponds to Aquarius in the Tarot is the star. And look at this beautiful card. So she's naked, and to me that symbolizes um, honesty, right? Finally, just here I am, and all my suffering, everything I've endured, here I am, God, here I am, world. I'm just stripped down to my core selfhood. That's what Saturn sometimes wants to do. But look, she's kneeling on a foundation, right? And then pouring that wisdom out into the world to add value to the people around her and the lives of the people around her. So it fits with these themes of Saturn being a foundation and endurance so we can give from our suffering. We can give. And so keep that in mind. You know, I tell people a lot in readings, you are someone else's Saturn. Where Saturn is in your chart is where you can be Saturn. People need a good Saturn. Every situation requires it. You know, these are seven symbols. These seven ancient symbols are like doses of energy, but they're all necessary to make up reality. All 12 signs are a symbolic component of the reality. So you have become Saturn a new in that, that Aquarius sector. And this is the time to kind of celebrate it and dig and, and understand it and process it. Here are the charts that I want to show you for this very purpose. Uh, 22 January, that's right as I record this. This happens in hours. Busy week. I, I'm, I'm, you know, getting this video out. But just know if you're watching this like Monday or Tuesday, you're still in the wake here of Venus Saturn conjunction because Venus is hanging out in those final degrees of Aquarius until it ingresses into Pisces. But it's here on Sunday evening. I probably won't get this edited and released until after this perfects, but you have the Venus conjoining with Saturn where we figure out how to make beautiful 
you know, um, this experience we've had with Saturn and Aquarius. We can write about it, cry about it. I think Venus is tears. It can be because you can see people like musicians crying and they're just weeping because it's so intense when you sing, right? Um, you know, um, but let me let me just come off of that. So there's this on the 22nd of January, deep in the evening in Central Europe. On 11 February 2023, about noon here in Central Europe, you get Mercury coming into Aquarius. And this is a very special transit to have as Saturn is finishing on its time there because both Mercury and Saturn are the primary rulers of Aquarius. And they blend and mix together um, right here at the end of this Saturnine period in Aquarius. So to have them meeting is such a beautiful thing. And they both ingress into Pisces in early March almost together. So it's, they get to conjoin and have a final meeting of the rulers of Aquarius. We, we get that here in, in February. To It's almost like the final, the two power players of that sector come and say, all right, you liked it, you liked it, cool, cool. And then they join, then they go together into Pisces. That's uh, in ter- uh, February's astrology. We're still in the sun in Aquarius when Mercury enters Aquarius on the 11th of February at noon. And by the way, Mercury and Saturn are both necessary to understand the archetype of Aquarius. Mercury's innovation, technology, um, you know, genius in terms of the mentality and the mind. Saturn is the larger structures and the hierarchies of society. And so you, you have these kind of societal structures that, that um, combine with innovation. And that is a key way to understand the Aquarian archetype. You have to dig in with Mercury to understand Aquarius. People might be saying, well, how does Mercury have any relationship to Aquarius? It's the triplicity lord, the night triplicity lord. And so there's only, of the trigon lords, the two main ones are Saturn and Mercury. There is no exaltation lord, and Saturn is the domicile lord. So you have just Saturn and Mercury blends in Aquarius. All right. Let's move on, the 16th of February, so a mere five days later, 548 in Central Europe, you have the Saturn Kazemi, Sun purifying Saturn in the once a year meeting of the Sun and Saturn, the Kazemi moment. I love that this happens in Saturn's final month in its domicile of Aquarius before three weeks later, it goes into Pisces for good. And so this is another, you can think about it like this, it's like a final lap of Saturn and Aquarius here during the first part of 2023. And these individual moments are markers where maybe, you know, Saturn's waving to people and celebrating. Now this is the time that the Sun and Saturn get to blend and join. So I'm loving that this will come also 16 February. All right, here's some AI art. You've got this wonderful generation. I mean, this thing looks like the new structures that are built. It's an air sign, so there's a lot in the air. This could be our new technological. Uh, realities. AI itself is descending in ever deeper into our uh, reality. You have the internet more important than ever for all kinds of business activity. Many things are online that have never been online before. That all happened during Saturn's time in Aquarius. Remember 2020 March, everybody's on Zoom overnight. So these are the new structures that have been built with Saturn in Aquarius. I love this generation for that. You've got um, here, this one was pretty cool too. It's the tower. This is the Saturn that was built over its five and a half years in Capricorn and Aquarius, that new structure that's now going to be set up for the next, uh, you know, 25, 30 year cycle until Saturn can come back to these degrees. So I love this uh, image. And here's another one along those lines. It's just another structure. It's like in the distance. And I love this because there's the clouds and it's like the air sign, the air element and that new structure that is this Saturn in Aquarius. So these structures could be your life. What happened in your life in that Aquarius sector that's a new foundation that you're now able to rely on for this next, you know, 20 some odd years. That's how I would be thinking about this moment. Okay, let's move. The next topic, fixed sign activation, pings, 2022 eclipse stories and previews 2023's eclipse stories. And this has to do with the fact that the lunar nodes are still in fixed signs. And there is something, the lunar nodes are are hypothetical points, they're imaginary points. And when they, um, there's also the exact point that square the lunar nodes. The lunar nodes are always in the same degree opposite each other. And these points that are in the same degree squaring the nodes are called the bendings. There's a north bending and a south bending. And when the moon is at its lowest point below the ecliptic, that's the south bending. 
And that's where planets are hitting right now in Aquarius. That's where the south bending is because it's so south of the ecliptic and then it starts bending to go up north and hits the north node and then rises above the ecliptic, the path of the moon. So there's a bunch of pings to the south bending that activate and trigger the eclipse story and fixed signs because these are angular activations. Uh, you know, so let me just keep going. I, I don't want to get too lost in some of the technical soup here, but I'm going to go back to Devore's encyclopedia and use that again. I've been loving this encyclopedia just for how comprehensive it is and how much it covers across tradition, ancient, medieval, uh, more traditional in terms of Renaissance, and then 18th, 19th, 20th century. So it covers so much ground. I really enjoy having that sort of coverage, the breadth of coverage. Devore talks about fixed signs in a way that I think are important to understand what this eclipse cycle has been about and what will be pinged here in Aquarius season 2023. Devore says fixed signs represent a balance of conflicting forces. They are more uniformly referred to as uh, executive types. That's what I, that quote I liked here. And then are occasionally referred to as the foundation signs. Okay. Remember Saturn foundation, Saturn rules fixed sign Aquarius. Saturn is in Aquarius. The eclipses are in fixed signs. Um, so there's a foundation component to this whole moment. Really 2022 was the most shock to the foundations that we've had. 2023 is coming out of those shocks, but this particular solar season is another activation before we're fully out of this shock to our foundations. And he says here about the fixed signs, they tip distinctly typify each element. Um, and then he goes down here, they're the builders of the world. The fixed sign tenacity uh, is dependent upon to support and stabilize these the leading signs. I think mean, he means by cardinal signs there. So cardinal then fixes the support and the stabilization, the builders of the world, the foundations. And that is what we had eclipsed and had a Saturn transit through uh, in 2022. Saturn in a fixed sign squaring all eclipses and fixed signs in 2022. So there was a jolt and a shock to the foundations. Especially if you were fixed heavy in your nativity, you probably felt that. Um, and so, again, here's the charts for the solar season. 29 January, so a, a Sunday from today, you're going to have the sun meet the south bending right here and square the nodes. So the sun conjoins the south bending. This is a point that we can mark as the exact period between eclipse seasons because the sun is exactly squaring the nodes and with, the, with whatever bending it's going to be with. Um, and so you, but it's in Aquarius with Saturn. And so we re-trigger eclipse seasons in 2022. Let's remind us it was um, April and May, and then it was October, November. Those eclipses were all about fixed sign pinging and activation. So you might be revisiting some of those themes here in January and into February during Aquarius season because of, again, transit planets triggering the nodes by conjoining the south bending. The other uh, chart we'll look at is 16 February 2023, 8 in the morning in Central Europe, and Mercury by this time is now squaring the nodes, conjoining the south bending, pinging that eclipse story. So just keep that in mind. If there's a little bit of echo or aftershock, I was in uh, one of my, the largest earthquake I've ever been in, I was in last week. We had a 5.1, 20 miles from here. My apartment shook a little bit. I, was, <laughs> I knew it was an earthquake immediately and was able to look it up, and then 10 minutes later was an aftershock. Um, but this is the kind of shock to the foundation that eclipses and Saturn can bring to the, to the fixed signs. So if there's a little bit of those aftershocks in your life from last year's eclipses, this could be a part of um, this story here in February. Let's move now. Um, actually, I wanted to just remind everyone, I've got two videos I made last year, the lunar nodes in astrology, what do they signify, part one, and then I had a video, the lunar nodes in astrology, part two chart examples. You might want to go back to these videos if you're looking for maybe ideas about what may be triggered here as both the sun and Mercury can join the south bending during Aquarius season. Um, all right, final theme of Aquarius season in the last little bit I'm going to talk about in this video is Venus exalted in Pisces, getting lost in beauty. That is part of this upcoming astrology. And I'm going to remind us what Venus can signify using Vedius Fallon's translation Riley. Venus is pure trades, fine voices, a taste for music, sweet singing, beauty, painting, and mixing of color. Basically, it's the arts. Venus is beauty and the arts and the act of creating beautiful things and are uh, you know to enjoy you know and so um 
And then, you know, maybe the core here is unification, right? Bringing people together. Arts bring us together. We sing together. We share art. You know, this is part of when you sing, people love your voice. You know, it's a very communal and sharing thing, the production of beauty is. And so I think that's why Venus at its core can signify unity or unifying. Um, and then let's remind us what Pisces is. This is, a, this is in Devor, the encyclopedia again. What I loved here is he says that... Um, it symbolizes those who dwell in the innermost regions of the sea, and it's symbolic of life after death. He says here, the inhibiting of self-expression except through others. So there's an interconnective quality to Pisces where we're, we're like in the oneness of being, and we can't escape being in this collective sea that we're all in together. I love, so I love that he brings that up here. And then he says here, the struggle of the soul within the body and this is why I like the idea here is that the soul, the soulfulness of Pisces, where it's like, okay, I'm in the prison of my body, but once you get to, that's Aquarius maybe, once you get to Pisces, it's like, whoa, no, there's this soul that's interconnected to all beings. And that that can be so generative for the production of beauty. A lot of art is about this struggle of, the, of humanity and the collective and in our relationships and understanding what humanity is. A lot of uh, things that are beautiful are kind of exp showing us who we are in the context of other people, right? Films are about that. And so this, this, it's this idea that there's, there's a search for the soul. We're in this incarnated body, maybe in this more denser body. And how can we access the soul? Venus and Pisces will allow us to, through the expressions of beauty, beautify and generate around this soul struggle. And that's what I was just saying. A lot of the arts are soul oriented. It's the, the kind of root meanings of life are expressed through the creative act. This is why I think Venus is exalted in Pisces because it's using creativity to address head on this kind of core problem of, the, of, of self in the sea of interconnected you know, um, relations with others and then maybe feeling trapped or kind of getting lost within that. We can, we can sing and search through beauty and the expressions of beauty. Okay, let me come back. 27 January 2023, 3.30 a.m. So that's coming up here this Friday. You will have, uh, let's see, what was this chart? This was uh, Venus entering Pisces. So it's this, this Friday, it's this week, 27 January, Venus enters Pisces. Right here very early in the morning in, the cent in Central Europe. And um, 5 February 2023, is the next chart I want to look at about 4.30 in the morning, you have Venus squaring Mars. I think that has the potential to be a very productive transit for relationships, maybe the kind of thing where we have real tension with another person and that can generate beauty, that can generate the artistic expression. You know, heartbreak's a perfect place from which to write or think. It, you know, heartbreak has, um, has motivated so many works of art um, that that could be some kind of heartbreak transit, maybe a letter where it's not responded to, you know, this Mars and Gemini uh, is going to um, just not really as concerned with Venus and Venus is trying to, to flood it with its powers, you know, but then there's a tension and then we use that for creativity. So that's going to happen on 5 February, the Venus Mars square, always kind of a hot uh, combination, especially in hard aspect. I'm going to say sexy. It could certainly come off as that or come through with that. Venus and Mars are the two kind of sexy planets that when they merge, it can be uh, combustive around those topics. Okay, um, here's some of the art that I wanted to share. Look at this. It's like a figure of a woman, and there's many of them. And, they're, and where is she? It's hard to find her. I think this is very Piscean. We have many identities, right? And as Devor was saying, finding the self um, the soul were, were bound and the search for the self and the relationship to others through others. We have many selves, don't we? And we use different selves for different contexts around different people. Um, so that's part of this uh, Venus and Pisces moment, this, the, the search for the soul, you might say. These other uh, works of art express the same concept. There's dual self, you know, Pisces is what they call a, mu a mutable sign or a double bodied sign because it's mutable, it's between two seasons. And so you can see here the mutability of Pisces, the different parts of who we are, trying to distinguish who we are even when we get into this very emotive and sensitive and creative place. Creativity can be so good for um, making distinction between parts of who we are. You can write in a different voice, 
You know, you can have a, a perspective of different narration. You can have memory. You can have future projection. It, it really does allow for the exploration of a multitude of selfhood. And then this was just another one, another uh, Piscean. I love the colors in this one. And you can see these people that are sort of lost and different people without really a clear concept of self or identity. Okay, those are the themes. That is it. That is the rest of the Aquarius season 2023. This is the second video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great Aquarius season. I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully have more videos coming very, very soon. Here's my website, sjanderson144.com. You can always find me here, look at my reading schedule if you're interested in that, and I'll talk to you very soon. Have a wonderful Aquarius season. Talk soon.